good afternoon. I'm here with um, a very special guest of Anime Expo 2014, uh, Mr. Yoshiki Sakurai. Hello, everybody. Uh, oh, oh, hi. Hello, everybody. Nice to meet you. Did I say your name right? Yes. Pronounced correctly. Yes. So far, the interview is going great. <laughs> um, uh, you're here um, specifically um, to, to let American audiences know about the release of an uh, amazing tale, a true story, um, uh, Gio Giovanni's yes. Island. Um, yes, it's not a, a totally a not true story. Uh, yeah, yeah, but it's combined with uh, historical facts and true episodes uh, with uh, in uh, Kenji Miyazawa's novel called Night on the Galactic Railroad, which is a very well-known Japanese novel for children, basically. So, uh, yes, it's half fiction. And Half true. Well, um, it's it's a very interesting, um, you know, a story compared to a lot of other um, anime uh, works, either film or in series, uh, going on right now. Um, so it seems just uh, thinking of your older work or your other works, uh, Ghost in the Shell, Standalone Complex, and uh, and Red Line, um, very um, very um, well um, beloved uh, as well. But those are set in these futuristic worlds um, uh, how do you feel about this and uh, what's sort of the um, inspiration to go back into back in time instead um, not uh, and, and regarded as a sci-fi guy I think probably from the industry but um, people keep on asking me to do robot things or uh, sci-fi things or uh, technology things but I'm actually not particularly uh, Keen on those subjects, not 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 especially. Well, I mean, well, interested in uh, uh, at an ordinary level, but um, because I was studying economics or politics or sociology uh, back in my university, um, I, I have uh, ideas or uh, thoughts about uh, certain subjects, so that probably might help me to do those kind of. Uh, themes for my screenplay, but um, I'm also interested in children's show, actually. Yeah. Yes, I've always wanted to do children's show. So, um, yes, so something easy and something um, for, it not, I wouldn't say it's, it's, it's for uh, the level is low, it's because to, to, to tell a story for a uh, younger age group is actually sometimes even more difficult than to do uh, uh, difficult things. Uh, so, um, but yes, uh, it, it was a challenge for me. And um, but I really like uh, Japanese Island is uh, is half uh, kind of a documentary like. So um, it was another challenge for me, but it was interesting. Yes, yes. Um, and um, the there was like a. A blend and a change from the the fantasy part that the boys um, enjoyed, and also you seen it? Oh. Uh, the the trailer. <laughs> and I want to see it very yeah. very soon. It's not out. It's, no, it's, it's not out yet. It's released in Japan. That's right, and it's been uh, it has been released in France. It's doing quite well, and it will be in UK and also in Korea, but not in the US. So um, I'm really hoping to. Uh, distribute the film, yeah. Um, so yes, uh, it's a it's the mixture of uh, like a true historical story, and it's because the main characters are uh, two boys, one ten year old, one six year old, and um, their imagination sort of sometimes overcome their difficulties. That's the main concept. So the fantastic scenes are really fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can imagine uh, the, the hardship and the, the difficulties uh, during that time and um, you know of course trying to uh, um, you know um, escape you know in, in that kind of fantasy totally understandable I mean we love anime a lot of us want to escape into, into a world that's happier than, than the ones we know or um, the animation style though how do you feel about it because it's a kind of blend from the fantasy and then to the more the more realistic do you think uh, the animation really suits what you have in mind Yes, uh, definitely, totally, because um, 
One reason why we didn't do that in live action was because the we cannot shoot the story on the island which is still occupied by the Russians and uh, so uh, and, and also because the fantastic scenes fantasy scenes uh, work better in animation than um, so they, they, they move on the scenes move on seamlessly from the fantasy scenes and the real world and then back and forth so um, I, th I think uh, the, the story uh, is told better in animation that's a, a beautiful way to be telling the story and I'm sure um, American audiences especially just love uh, the way that um, Japanese animation, the aesthetic of uh, just like there's so many ways to be animated and, and it's, uh, it's so amazing. Um, going on with um, I guess uh, the historical background, do, do you feel this is uh, this reminds me of um, uh, Grave of the Fireflies at least a little bit like I mean of course I haven't seen it yet but that was also a very yeah hard film to watch yeah, yeah. Um, would it were, were, were there inspirations behind that as far as uh, animation goes bef before um, went while making this movie um, actually uh, w we weren't thinking uh, that these two movies were particularly similar while we were making it but um, yes uh, uh, well because it's based in the, the war time uh, it, it does resemble a little bit of the Red of Firefly but the the main difference I think is uh, is the Giovanni's Island takes place after the war mainly it's after the war is finished and, and Japan was defeated then the story starts <laughs> so um, and uh, but what I try to to be careful about the most was to be fair to both uh, the Japanese side and also for the Russian side because uh, the Soviets occupied Ireland after the war basically. And but the interesting thing is that uh, many of the episodes were, were, were actually what, what really happened to Mr. Tokuno who was the model of the main character of the story uh, he's like 84 he lives in Hokkaido and he still wants to go back to the island actually but uh, but the interesting thing was, from, interesting thing for me was that um, he says he would say something like, "I was very frightened and I was very sad and angry that uh, his house was taken uh, by the Russians." But at the same time, at the same time, he would say something like, "But by the way, Russian girls are really pretty," <laughs> and, uh, that, and and those are like. Uh, sometimes things that we regard as contradictory does sort of dwell in the same mind of, of, a, of, a, of, an, indivi of an individual and it's, it's real I think it was really real and then he would say something like you know I tasted this bread for the first time with honey and it was tasted like magic and it was we really tried desperately to get a piece of bread from the the Russian household and, and Etc. And and then they and they were, and they were uh, he would say that they were really friendly, although they were the ones who took their homes. Uh, so these kind of things happen, you know. They're not always mean. And they're not always strict. And they're not always kind. <laughs> and but they lived together on the same island for three years. So well, naturally the um, they went to the same school actually. So so the. Um, the Japanese children would start talking broken Russian and vice versa. The, the Russian children would start talking broken Japanese. And as a matter of fact, um, Mr. Tokuno s still speaks very good Russian. So, um, yeah, so, so yes, yeah, so this is incredible. Yes. It's, uh, when we went to the a Russian restaurant together, he started teasing a Russian waitress. <laughs> history when we have to look back at it uh, that nothing is black and white yeah. and um, I'm sure that'll be appreciated by audiences uh, not thinking oh this is against this country or this is uh, for this country but one thing I was thinking about was now um, I'm comparing it to our the way the world works today and how much we've connected or disconnected depending on the way you think about it 
uh, how do you feel about um, Japan's relationship to everyone else in the world or the yeah. U.S. is yeah nowadays? Yeah, I think it's a it's a really uh, serious and a good question at the same time. And I was thinking about the fairness, uh, and um, although we we uh, as a Japanese and all the media in Japanese would only well not only but they tend to focus on the aspect that the islands were taken uh, and and the J Japanese dwellers the islanders were, were like kick, get out kicked out of the island but and they lost their homes or they lost their houses but at the same time we have to uh, we have to bear in mind that actually the Russian families were also taken away their homes back in the, back in Russia and they were ordered to live in the the islands, which we probably did not like at all at first. And Tanya is the main character, uh, uh, the Russian girl, ten year old, and they get together, you know, uh, well, and they, they start to know each other. The main character Junpei starts to feel affection towards her, etc. So, but um, naturally, we can we easily imagine that Tanya would never would <laughs> have liked to to come to this island at the end of the world so um, so we have to have the imagination always to think on the opposite side and uh, we're not the only victims that were um, uh, sacrificed ourselves in, in the, the course of history uh, the Russians just the same uh, they, they sacrificed many things and also the Korean characters uh, appear in the story uh, we, we share we should bear that in mind too, I think. And so, coming back to your question about um, um, contemporary Japanese situation, um, I think like uh, incidents like 311 uh, disaster that we had, uh, the earthquake, the tsunami, and the um, nuclear power plant things, those are things that we would not like to talk about, <laughs> really. But, um, but, um, my thinking is that in many cases uh, in history, including this one um, and including the one that took place in northern Hokkaido, um, in many cases uh, we think we regard of it ourselves as victims, but we are aggressors at the same time when seen from another point of view. Uh, it's true that we are polluting the world. Uh, we are time now. We, we still haven't solved the problem quite yet, and we we have to be fair about that. I think we cannot just pretend that we're victims. We are are uh, the polluters uh, uh, at the same time, and we we, we must not forget that uh, position. And um, and it's always the other way around too. In, in many cases, when <laughs> in cases that we are regarded as aggressors, but in many cases we are victims at the same time and it goes for all of us I think and we have to have this imagination that to, to, to always see from the opposite side and not just one and um, we have to be responsible for both ends you know <laughs> I think that is um, an excellent um, philosophy and a way of thinking about the way we need to, uh, to live life to take responsibility for our actions and as you said um, you know so much time to say we're only the victim we're the victim for doing this because we're the victims but it, it was just it's cyclical like it was just us feeling like we're victims and then we do something aggressive and when I say we I, I mean I'm talking about the, the US being American myself but I'm not even gonna get into the, that just in case so uh, but um, anyway uh, I want to thank you uh, for your time and um, uh, for this film because I'm, I'm sure it, uh, the American audience would really like to see this uh, new part of history that we don't really know much about and um, um, it seems like a serious film but like also playful and showing uh, there's hope it's fun, actually yeah. yes and I th I'm, I'm glad that actually Korea was the first country to buy this film which is which was quite unexpected for us and, and they are showing it. They, they, they were going to have a distri theatrical distribution in the country, and also we uh, we sh 
we were invited uh, we had we were the in the part of the official selection in, in Moscow International Film Festival they showed it in Russia too so um, my thinking is that um, our fairness was <laughs> a little bit uh, <laughs> appreciated. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Well, I mean, I'm <laughs> they didn't say anything. I mean, if they accepted. Um, and uh, so I'm dying for the, the US release. <laughs> I, I need your support. <laughs> so please um, go out and, um, you know, uh, make sure that uh, you support, uh, hopefully, an American release because I've heard it actually. What I wanted to say, and my brain keeps stopping, is that it uh, has been compared to live action, I mean live um, movies like uh, The Diary of Anne Frank. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that uh, something from the anime world is taken that seriously. And I hope American audiences take it more seriously and embrace it and accept it into our theaters. Um, I want to thank you again, thank you. Uh, Mr. Sakurai. This is for uh, Tokyo Otaku Mode, uh, Sean Cardino, uh, signing out.